What's going on guys? Great Disciple back with another video. In the background, we have an amazing gameplay on Hunted. I start off with the Man of War, I switch over to the Dingo once the enemy calls in raps and I never go back. Drop 95 kills, you can watch me manipulate spawn left and right. I hope you enjoy it, but I'm not going to talk about the gameplay. I want to stay on our subject line of moral depravity. You know, I brought it up back in the um, video on the transgender bathroom issue with the LGBT and Target. And then again on Sunday, I talked about moral depravity, inclusivity, intolerance, and, and the like. So let, let me start with this. Who here has ever heard of what's called the Gestalt Prayer? And I know you guys are shaking your head. Maybe if you majored in, in psychology. It was written by a guy named uh, Dr. Fritz Perls. It's a 56-word statement. And it was very popular in the 1960s. And here's what it says. I do my thing, and you do your thing. I am not in this world to live up to your expectations, and you are not in this world to live up to mine. You are you and I am I. And if by chance we find each other, it's beautiful. If not, it can't be helped. And that was the theme of the 1960s. You do your thing, I'll do mine. If we meet, great. If we don't, it'll be nuclear war, basically. All right, it's, it's an awful way to live, and that's kind of where our society is gone. You do your thing, I do my thing. You can't tell me that what I'm doing is wrong, and I can't tell you that what you're doing is wrong, and you have no right to tell me what's right and wrong. I mean, it's an awful situation to be in. There's no boundaries, there's no limitations to where we can go, and that's why we see what's going on in the world. Let me illustrate it, shall I? All right, uh, how about in uh, July of 2015, Germany moves to legalize incest. And I know you're like, well, what does it matter what they do in Germany? Well, as Germany goes, so goes the United States, usually within 30 years. And uh, if you don't believe me, just go do some research on Google and it'll prove itself. Um, they, they said, or there, there was a commentator on this that said, you know, once you strip down the barrier of homosexual marriage, all the other barriers to marriage really pale in strength. So you take that one off, why not incest? I mean, we said that two men can get married. Why not a brother and a sister or a father and a daughter? Pretty crazy, right? Um, how about on August 2015, uh, the United States is moving to lower the age of consent. You know, worldwide, America has got one of the highest ages of consent, which is 18 for the most part. In some states, it goes down to 17 and 16. But statistically, worldwide, the average age of consent is 12, which is the age of puberty for most girls. Um, in some countries, it's as low as 8. You know, you have the, um, the Indian cultures in the Middle East. They... Um, you know, they, they have, what's that called, the marriage where they, they give their daughters away very early with a dowry. I, I can't remember the wording, and I apologize for that. But they said in the article that with the influx of immigration into America and all these people's cultures being undermined by the laws of America, that America is going to have no choice but to lower the age of consent, which I think is, is awful. Um, and then at the same time, in order to make pedophilia less of an offense, you go over to Switzerland and look at what they're saying over there. I mean, there, there is an ongoing study right now where these doctors have developed some type of medication which they think can cure pedophilia. Now, let me tell you that the, the slippery slope that's on. It, once you say that pedophilia is no longer a crime, it's a disorder, the government can no longer prosecute because it's an illness, not an offense against somebody. You think about that for a little bit, okay? And that study is currently undergoing, so you can you can Google that one as well. I talked about the legalization of prostitution in that LGBT transgender issue video, and uh, on August of 2015, there is a huge movement right now in America to legalize prostitution based on studies done in Denmark and Germany because of the safety of the prostitutes. Um, they say that there'll be less STDs going around. Uh, it's safer for the prostitutes because they can take credit cards, which means it's easier to track the Johns. And then they also say that it will lower the risk in sex trafficking, which is, uh, I mean, it's so idiotic to think that. I mean, you don't overcome evil with evil. You know what I mean? If anything, it'll increase sex trafficking because it will make it more of a business model, which is more accepted to make even more money with credit cards. I don't, I don't get where people are going. And then on top of this, you talk about moral depravity. What about the legalization of drugs? And I know a lot of you probably do, do smoke weed, um, but marijuana is just a jumping off point. I mean, once the pharmaceutical companies get involved in this, why wouldn't we follow suit with what they do over there in Europe in some countries where they have methadone clinics and heroin clinics? You know, their argument was, well, if we give heroin to people in a controlled way, maybe they won't destroy themselves with diseases by sharing needles so that's what they do they have heroin clinics you can just walk in and get high all right why, why not in america i mean think about that for a little bit you know there were stories uh back in the old days 
thousands and thousands of years ago where you would read about these cultures where they would sacrifice these babies to these pagan gods. In the Bible, you hear words like Molech and Chemosh, where they would take these newborn babies and they would sacrifice them in fire to these gods. And people are so appalled, like, oh my goodness, why would they do that? Did you know uh, last year alone there were 42 million abortions worldwide? In America, there were 1.25 million. Think about those numbers. I mean, we're talking about the murdering of an entire generation of people. Now, I don't care if you're pro-life or pro-choice. You think about those numbers. An average of 40 million babies a year are aborted. I mean, wow. What's, well, what about marriage rates? Marriage rates are, are an indication of culture. Uh, back in the 1960s, what's called the silent era, 65% of adults between the ages of 18 and 32 were married. In the 1980s, the boomer generation, uh, 48% of adults between 18 and 32 were married. Let's go to Generation X, which is 1997, uh, 18 to 32 year olds. We're talking 36% are married, would get married. And then uh, 2013, the millennials, uh, ages 18 to 32, we're talking 26% marriage rate. You know, when people stop getting married and stop having children uh, in what's called a nuclear family with a mother and a father and the kids, the culture follows suit. And there's this, this caving in on itself. I mean, you could say it goes back to the 1960s with the Gestalt prayer and things like that. But what we have right now is tolerance. You do your thing, I do mine. Who am I to say that you're wrong and I'm right? And you can't tell me that I'm wrong. And uh, if you don't like what I do, get over it because you can't stop me. Well, there's no limitations when everybody does what's right in their own eyes. There's no limitations. I mean, who are you to say that he can't rape her? And who am I to say that you can't rape my daughter? I mean, you do what you do and I do what I do. I don't know. It's food for thought. I got, a, I got an idea where I'm going to go with this. If you got something out of it, leave a comment down below and always subscribe for more. I'll see you in the next one.